Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you the number of Lyme disease cases per year. And I'm going to give you a little bit of history here so we can figure out what happened uh, with the Lyme disease cases. And it's kind of controversial and kind of interesting. So I made a graphic display of how this all works so you can see the full timeline. And I'm going to show it to you on my computer here. So uh, just one second, we'll switch over to the computer and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, by the way, my name is Ryan Kearns and I had Lyme disease. It nearly killed me by attacking my heart. I ended up fixing it holistically after months and really years of trials, tribulations, struggle and pain and trying to figure it all out. And I know a lot of people are scared about their health right now and I don't want you to be one of them. So that's why I created this channel. And if you're here for the first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But let's talk about the United States number of Lyme disease cases per year and why this is controversial and kind of a, a strange topic. All right. So I have a little timeline set up for you here. And as you can see, it's going to go all the way to today. So in 2004, the CDC said that there was 20,000 cases of Lyme disease. Okay. So pretty rare, right? Uh, and the green circles are going to be kind of the effect. So the, the, yellow square is just the facts. The green circle is the effect of these facts. The green circle here says doctors tell their patients that they do not have Lyme disease, right? There's a much greater chance that they're going to say you don't have it because you come to them and they're thinking in their head, okay, but the CDC says there's only 20,000 cases of this. So there's no way that you probably have Lyme disease. You, you'd be a very rare thing that happens, right? And so this kind of changed everything. It kind of messed a lot of stuff up. If you saw another one of my videos with Avril Lavigne, when she's crying because she has Lyme disease and the doctors told her that she can't have Lyme disease. They basically said like, oh, you're probably just tired. You're probably depressed. You should just try to get up and play the piano. You should like just get out of bed, go for a walk. Like they tried all these things and basically told her she was crazy and it drove her it drove her crazy. Like imagine if everybody around you is calling you crazy. It starts to mess with your uh, mental stability. And you're thinking like, am I actually crazy? Or is there something wrong with me? And so she has this emotional breakdown on the news. I posted a video uh, reacting to it. But the point is that they're not able to tell patients that they have Lyme disease because they don't believe that the patient has Lyme disease because of the case number is so low, according to the CDC. So that's very interesting. and something to look at there in 2004. Then we move forward to 2013. And at the beginning of 2013, the CDC says that there are 30,000 cases of Lyme disease, which is only up 10,000 cases. So still in the doctor's minds, they're thinking, okay, this person doesn't have Lyme disease. They probably have, they go through tons of other things before they ever get to Lyme disease, even though these, as you're going to see soon, these numbers are not accurate. So of course, researcher and advocacy pressure started to build up because people that had Lyme disease were like, what the hell? There's no way that only 20,000 people have this. The researchers that were researching it was like, I have seen more than 20,000 people who had this. So there's no way that only 20,000 people get this every year. So they were very skeptical and they started pressuring the CDC. They started, you know, going to news outlets and talking about this pretty loudly. And then later in 2013, the CDC admits that there's only 30,000 case reported cases, but the actual number is 10 times that. So 300,000. Okay. So in the same year, they went from 30,000 to 300,000 individuals per year in the United States alone. That's incredible, right? So all of a sudden, when the pressure is hitting them all the time, they finally look into it and they say, okay, now it's 300,000 cases, um, actual cases, which then should have the effect of changing the doctor's minds, right? And they should approach it thinking maybe this is Lyme disease earlier on rather than uh, constantly pushing it under the rug and saying that, you know, maybe it's not Lyme disease all the time. Uh, August 19th, 2013, the CDC releases a statement commenting that 
This new estimate supports studies published in the 1990s, indicating that the true number of cases is between three and 12 fold higher than the number of reported cases, which gives us this 300,000 number down here. However, if you read this, it says that they're basing this off of studies published in the 1990s. That means that they had this information for 20 years and did nothing with it. Okay. So why would they do that? Right. Why did they have this information for 20 years and do nothing with it? That I can't answer that question. It's just a question that I'm asking you. It's a question that we should all be asking and we should think about this. And hopefully this video doesn't get taken down, but the studies published in the 1990s prove that there's between three and 12 fold higher the number of reported cases. And then that leads us to today. But before I get to today, I just want to comment on like, what is going on here? Why are they telling us that there's less cases than there actually are? And then when they switch over and finally do tell us the amount of cases, why did that not change the behavior of doctors? Why did doctors not start thinking of Lyme disease as a diagnosis more early on in the process rather than waiting until way later when they really don't know what it is anymore? And they're like, maybe it's Lyme disease, right? If they found it earlier on, they'd be able to use antibiotics. So they'd be able to get rid of those microbes pretty quickly. That's the idea anyway. That doesn't always work either. That's a whole other story. But you would think they would want to find it early if it is Lyme disease. So really, the only way to get a diagnosis is if you have the rash. If you don't have the rash, you're out here looking for what you have for years and years and years, and they tell you fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, depression, chronic fatigue syndrome. They tell you all these things, but in reality, you likely have Lyme disease. Because as you're going to see today on the CDC website, it says that there are still only 30,000 reported cases per year, but the actual number of cases is around 476,000 cases per year. So closer to the 12 fold number that they were saying over here, it's not 10 times, it's more than 10 times the amount of reported cases, which means that doctors are likely still passing up many people who have this disease and they don't even know it. So people are suffering People are wondering what's wrong with them. People are thinking that they are sick and they are not going to find a way out, but they don't even know what they have. And they're telling them these broad syndrome based things like with chronic illness, right? Chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, uh, fibromyalgia. I just went over all of these, right? So, so if you've ever been told that, if you've ever been told that you have chronic fatigue syndrome or that you have fibromyalgia, maybe go back to your doctor and say, I might have Lyme disease, right? And Either way, whether you have it or whether or not, the good news is that a lot of times the healing process is very similar because the healing process that works is actually a healing process that is holistic to the individual. That means we take a whole view of the individual and we treat the individual. We look at what can be tweaked, fixed, change slightly over time, what habits they can build into their life. We create a healthy lifestyle around the individual. We give them loads and loads of support and, and group accountability. And what happens next is people heal from Lyme disease when they're able to change the entire environment and landscape inside of their body. Lyme disease microbes can't really live there. Not to mention, if you did have chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, depression, all that stuff, those things start to go away as well. Because what we do is we treat the individual in a way that all chronic illness will not survive, right? All chronic illness will go away when your lifestyle is correct right? We treat it with lifestyle. We don't treat it with a medicine or a pill. You just take it once and it goes away. We treat it with an entire new way of thinking, living, being, talking, surrounding yourself with people, right? You become a new person that can't possibly be sick because you're so in tune with your body. You're, you know what you're doing when it comes to nutrition. You understand how to, you know, you turn on your detoxification processes to get the microbes out of your body. And all of this put together equals a healthy, thriving individual that can beat any chronic illness and any illness whatsoever. So those people are able to heal from Lyme disease and all of the other things that their doctor said they had by following 
the process that we put together with our clients. Now, I can't speak for other nutritionists or other doctors. I'm sure that some of them do know exactly what to do and how to treat someone holistically like I just described. However, our clients see amazing results. They get healthy. It's not a quick fix. It's not an easy button. But if they commit to themselves, they're able to become the healthiest version of themselves and they're able to thrive by the end of it. So it's insanely powerful and That's exactly how we should be treating this, especially because we don't know who has Lyme disease and who doesn't based on these numbers. Hopefully this video finds you well and you continue down your healing journey. If this is your first time here, again, click the subscribe button below. We post new videos every week or so, and I try to stay on top of it. I'll also answer any comments that you comment below in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video. That tells that YouTube algorithm that we're making good content so that more people that are suffering from Lyme disease can see it. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.